Hello and welcome to Talking Dogs on a Monday. I'm Ian Fortune. I'll be uh, bringing you through for the next hour or so. As you can see, the Exile Dub is missing this week. So we are joined by his able replacement, uh, the, the the semi-voice of Shelburne Park, the man that stands in when I couldn't be bothered, uh, Barry Call. Uh, Barry Call was at Shelburne Park on Saturday night, taking in all the action of the Bresbet Easter Cup. And of course, we'll bring you the uh, opening round action from the Conan Annie Kirby Memorial at Limerick. Some sensational displays, one in particular. And we are joined today, I'm glad, uh, very glad to say, by Sam Tweed of the sponsors Bresbet for the Easter Cup action. Sam, uh, it's that time of year again, you're, you're back on with us and uh, plenty to talk about the Bresbet Easter Cup, it's a, a cracking competition. Yeah, we were really happy when we saw the entries before the first round, um, it looked a very strong renewal. Obviously we've been a little bit unlucky with some non-runners, uh, been plagued by it really so far, but a couple of great lineups for the semi-finals. Yeah, and of course, uh, one or two of the bigger names have gone out. Um, you know, that can only be a good thing for, for the sponsors. Um, that said, you want to go out in the right way, not, not as you say, with non-runners. And a couple of notable fallers the other evening, we'll, we'll touch that in time. But how has the market been going for you? Uh, quiet so far. I mean, it tends to happen with the anti-post markets. It, it speeds up as you go along, unless you put up a rick before the first round, really. Um, I mean, as it stands, our biggest liability is Drew Piss Fidget. Uh, laid at 50s and she looks to have a fantastic draw on Saturday night. Yeah, well, we'll touch upon that in a few moments. Let's get into the heats themselves. You, you said about the, the two non-runners in the opening heat, Miami King, uh, a split web. He'll be back in a couple of weeks' time. Boyle Sports Coco picked up a bit of a, a virus the previous weekend, so she was a non-runner from early in the week as well. Um, but we still managed to find a tremendous winner of the opening heat, Highview Splash, a dog who had showed immense promise at the back end of last year. Um, Sam, just from the outset, what sort of price was Highview Splash and what sort of price is he now? Uh, he's well. He's four to one now. We've got him second favourite at the moment. Uh, I would have to go back and check what price he was before no, that race. Uh, I've not got it up to hand at the moment. But no, I thought he did everything right on Saturday. He um, quick away moved. It did move noticeably into into the rail. I think he will be better in one. Um, but his record, just been having a look through, he's won three or four races when drawn one or two. He's obviously got a lot of early pace and. I mean, we like a solo for him at the weekend. He, he never saw another dog. Yeah, certainly did see another dog. Uh, Barry, this was Highview Splash back to what he promised to be at the back end of last year. It was only his second ever start of 550 yards. And I think we're all sort of in agreement that 550 yards is his trip. Relished a little longer run to the corner. Got up the inside on the bend from Sonia and Grande. Went on about it. It was all very straightforward. 29.73 at the time. We didn't think it would be the fastest time of the night. But it was. Um, I think conditions were tough enough. And I think in, 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 in hindsight, this was a hell of a run. Yeah, it was the fastest of the heats by some way, and it was. And um, look, the draw couldn't have been kinder for him when the non-runners came out. Obviously, we had uh, Miami King on his on his outside missing, and, and his main danger missing as well. Obviously, in Boyle Sports Coco. So, look, the draw was perfect for him. And uh, Neon Lights wouldn't be known for his early pace, neither would Hookham as well. And he only really had to lead up Sonia and Grande. Done that comfortably enough, and look, it was all over. You were worried about how close would Hookham turn or how close would Neon Lights turn, but look, they never got within maybe five or six lengths of him at the sprint box, and he was always going to go on and, and win comfortably. One to two would probably. Looks value in hindsight now, doesn't it, really? Because he was always going to lead, I suppose. But, um, yeah, the 29.73 was a good run. As you mentioned, he did look like a real star last year in the juvenile derby. Was, I think he brought 28 seconds around Shelburne Park in, in semi-finals or yeah, did, one yeah. of the earlier rounds. And that. Um, it's just taken him a while to come back to his best. I was in Shelburne maybe six, seven weeks ago and he'd done a sprint trial um, 1890 or 1902. Nothing that would set the world to, like, look, a decent run for an hour grader, but not for a dog like Highview Splash. And last week's trial, 30.08. Again, the track probably wasn't flying, but he's gradually coming back to himself. And, and rumours were on Saturday that he probably would have needed last week's run. So, yeah, look, there was a huge performance. Um, as you say, 29.73, we looked out as though that was maybe a, a decent run, but not a, a superstar run. But uh, as it turned out with the other heats, it certainly was the fastest run of the night. And uh, yeah, he's a dog that's going to have to be feared going forward. His 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 desire to get to the fence, is it a worry? Uh, it is a worry next week because, uh, as we'll see later on, Clona Duke from track one. Clona Duke's a big boy, isn't he? I think he tips the scales at near 77 or, or 80 pounds or so, and, and he will edge to the middle of the track, as we've seen uh, on, on Saturday night. And as Sam did mention, it was quite noticeable how Highview Splash did go for the rails on the run-up. So they're drawn one and two next Saturday night. Something will have to give, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, it is a worry. I'm sure for connections of both, they would gladly swap the track draw around, but uh, that's not how it works. Yeah, the anti-post layers might be too worried about the two dogs bumping in the early yards. Um, <laughs> Sam, while we're at it, uh, Hukum and Sonia and Grande both progressed. I'd assume both are 
pretty sizable prices still. Yeah, we've got both in at double figures. Hookham fourteen to one. Sonia and Grande, the the outsider of the field at twenty eight. Um, I thought everything went right for him. Drawn wide, few runners, um, and and I thought that looked like his run. I thought he he did what he what he can do there. Uh, and Hookham, will he get the grace of having such a small field to kind of work his way through in in the later rounds? I thought it was ideal for him as well. I thought it was a very clean race where where they all kind of did the run, really. Yeah, when you when you actually consider that that um in second spot, Hookham is the second fastest qualifier, and Sonia and Grande in third is the third fastest qualifier. It'll yeah. probably tell you about the racing. Uh, later on in terms of you know there was crowding there was there was nothing straightforward for the remaining contenders but this was a contest where there, there could be no complaints you know it was a cleanly run race um neon lights is a bit unlucky like he's beaten ahead you know any sort of touch amongst the the two or three up front of him and he may well have grabbed third spot after that fine run in the opening round but again it just goes to show level of consistency you know 29.93 last week, 29.98 this week, you know, just over a half length, three parts of a length in the difference. And and, and I'm afraid that three parts of a length was the difference between qualifying and not qualifying. Uh, let's move on uh, to the second heat. Um, you mentioned that your your liabilities here are with Droopy's Fidget. She was one of two females that fought out the finish, Sam. This was a cracking race. Bally Walt for the second week running absolutely scorched to the third bend, but completely tied up. He looks like a dog that's probably in need of some racing, although he did have some runs prior to this competition. Maybe it's just the tougher conditions. As the track speeds up with temperatures perhaps warming up, Bally Walt is a greyhound to keep an eye on, but at the moment he's just not quite getting home, and it allowed Undulation and Droopy's Fidget to come through. They fought out a great finish. Just a neck between them, Undulation taking the honours, the 6-4 to four joint favourite alongside Superfast Gordon, who never really got involved in Droopy's Fidget, just in second spot at 6-1. to one. Um, Sam, your, your views on this contest um again two different running styles bally mac walt from the front and the two strong running bitches coming at him yeah i think bally mac walt would would like a dry week really i think the conditions probably suited him the least of everything i mean 344 sectional on on saturday looks looks pretty rapid but he's just not getting home um undulation i think five is probably where she wants to be so I know she's only in four on Saturday, but there's a few dogs that will be going kind of right out of the boxes in that contest. And Droopy's Fidget, I thought, no real excuses on on Saturday as such. But I was there when she won at Sheffield last year in the um, competition that she won. The I mean, Steel she's Cup, got a 420 uh, the, the Steel, sectional. The Steel effect. City Puppy Cup or something, wasn't it? Steel, uh, Steel yeah, Cup. That's, now, that's actually now merged with the Gym Crack and, and we're sponsoring that later this year. Uh, good good plug, Sam. Sheffield. Good plug. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I mean, she she's done a 420 sectional at Sheffield and a 428 at Monmore, and she's just not replicating that at the moment. But I think if she does so on Saturday, she, she's going to have a huge chance in that semi final. Yeah, um, Barry, they're, they're two ladies with um, a big engine. You know, they're, they're very similar nearly in their styles. They're both coloured bitches. They both have loads of pace down the back. They're strong. Um, you know, on this occasion, there was a neck between them. Undulation took the wider path and probably carried a little bit more momentum into the home straight. And that, and that was the key. Uh, Drewby's Fidget, yeah, she wasn't a lovely pitch and you'd have fancied your chances at the third bend, but Undulation came and snatched her. And Undulation, it has to be said, this is only her second start since September. A good winner last week, a good winner again this week. Um, it was only... I would imagine only about a minute, minute and a half after Rushy Meadows had completed a, or initiated a double for Brendan Matthews because he had a good winner down the Kirby. Two flying bitches and, and undulation. Certainly up there now with uh, the leading contenders for Easter Cup glory, you'd imagine. Yeah, and as you mentioned, she hasn't run since September of last year. It's only her second run. And if she was to run sort of below par or finish toward her fourth there, everybody would blame this bounce factor, wouldn't they? Or she, maybe she bounced after. So she could have bounced last week and still clocked 29.99. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was a, it was a really, really big run. And I'm sure that was in the back of their mind after producing such a big effort after being off for nearly five or six months to do that run last week. And look, I'm sure they're delighted just to get her through. But she showed good guts and determination. Um, yeah, she did match the second bitch from, say, the sprint box home. And it looked as though Droopy's Fidget was going to win turning for home when Bally McWall drifted a bit to the middle. But in fairness to her, she stuck it out and she just got there on the line and she ran all the way to the pickup. So I'm sure they're thrilled. She hasn't got a great draw in the semi final, as we'll touch on later on. But just to get her through, she's two from two now since she returned. And She's returned better than ever, and she wasn't too bad previously. But I uh, mentioned for the runner-up as well, Rupi Spidget. She got a bad fall in, in Mullingar in the in the 600. And she's not with Rob Gleeson that long, and, and Rob's dogs are absolutely flying at the moment. So 
And you wouldn't write her off just yet. I wouldn't like to be in Sam's shoes at the moment if that's the biggest liability because she has got a bit of a chance in there, certainly making the final. But um, yeah, and again, just to touch on Paddy McWalt, he is going up well, but he does need to stay a little bit better. Yeah, I think he wants the sun in his back. I, you know, even going into all. Shelburne the other night, we've seen colder temperatures over the last two or three months, but it had that sort of miserable, dank air about it. It just felt cold. It just felt, you know, just, you know, that real sort of wintry, sort of heavy feeling about it. And, and I think that's sort of coming across on the track the last two to three weeks. It's just not, there's no spring in it. And it's yeah. not helping a dog like Bally McWalt. Uh, Sam, you'd have worried about Drooby's Fidget's brother more so in the past, I'm sure, in terms of anti-post liabilities. Uh, she's a brother to Drooby's clue. She's not quite as strong as him, but uh, she's pretty fast. Uh, of the of the three of them, I, I assume Undulation is the shortest price in the market? Uh, we've actually got them, Fidget and Undulation, joint fabs. Um, I think Undulation would be shorter, but it looks like the semi-final one is the quite considerably stronger than semi-final two at the weekend. Um, I mean, fair play to Undulation. She did get a bit of bother at the weekend as well, and she still finished well. She, she definitely got some trouble at the first bend. Uh, and then stayed on well. I think Fidget enjoyed the cleaner of the two runs. And as I said, she's a very likable bitch undulation. Yeah. And what price are they exactly? Oh, seven to one. About oh, seven to one. And Bally Mac Walt? Bally Mac Walt, we've got at 20s. 20, yeah. Like I would say, I think he needs needs a couple of weeks of sun on his back and a faster track. Yeah. I mean, he should be leading a lot of these races if he can keep replicating that 344 sectional. Yeah, if it comes to Wednesday night now and I see the forecast for the weekend, uh, a balmy 16, 18 degrees. Do you know what? I think that's worth a little nibble each way, mm-hmm. uh, Barry. Like, you could easily see him leading around the corner in the final. Like, I, I, You know, I know he has to get there, but that's just the way he's been running. Yeah, and look, the wild seeds as well, he's highly likely to get five or six. I know now for a change, we have a lot of wild seeds in this competition at a latter stage. Usually it's maybe 10 inside seeds at this stage yeah. for them. Yeah, he certainly does. Just a mention for the others in that race, Ian, there was plenty of trouble on the run to the corner and at the fair and super fast Gordon, Penny's Lynx and Scotty Scheffler. All strong, strong dogs, especially Penny's Lynx and Scotty Scheffler. So I'm sure there's much more to come from those two as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that goes for all the dogs we lost on, on Saturday night out of the competition because, you know, we did lose some real quality. There's no question about it. For all the qualities left in it, we, we lost plenty as well. But that just goes to show the strength and depth of this um, competition. You, you were speaking there about, you know, training feats and whatnot. Uh, I, I wouldn't be too worried about Brendan Matthews runners um, bouncing. Uh, he knows a fair bit about training greyhounds at this stage. Absolutely no stone unturned. And as for this Liam Dowling fellow, well, yeah, I just wouldn't be surprised if he makes it as a trainer. You know, he's, he hasn't a bad record. Um, sensational weekend for him. We'll get on to that a little bit later on. On to Heat 3. And um, this was a heart and mouth sort of stuff. We saw the dogs going into the corner. Clona Duke edged off the fence. Deladi Da improved his position into the bend on the outside. Glengar Martha was there. Boyle Sports Bob and just, you know, after being prominent in those opening few strides, Ben's Teddy was there. He was squeezed out a little bit into the bend and seemed to be having a nice pitch on the opening corner, but seemed to clip heels or something. Hit the deck, Barry, and... Yeah, there was a collective sigh in Shelburne Park. Um, it has to be said, it didn't look great, but he got up and he he was he was just he looked confused. That that's how the best described. We we were fearing the worst. I spoke to Emma Buckley after racing. Thankfully, word had come through before then. Connor Byrne had sent on a message and said, "Listen, th- you know, I, I know it, seems, it sounds unlikely, but this this dog doesn't seem too bad." Um, it was a really scary moment, and thankfully, on Sunday morning, I spoke to Pat Buckley. I I, I described it on on um, on Twitter uh, how Pat said he was like a young lad that's been out in the tiles. He's sort of feeling sorry for himself, a bit groggy. He said, but he's fine. He said, so whatever way it was, he said he, he obviously just took a fair belt, and uh, he was just literally, you know, seeing seeing yeah. stars, or as you see in a cartoon, little birds were were flying around. But touch wood, all looks absolutely right as rain. He'll be stiff for a few days, but he said. No, the the target still toast to this dog is a is a bit of a warrior, and we're we're just delighted to have him. I think we'll move on from the Ben's Teddy stuff uh, because you know we don't want to reflect on it too much. But in the end, uh, Clona Duke did get loose at the head of affairs. Only seventeen seventy to the third bend. He holds on to it in thirty thirty. Barry, I've watched this a few times, and I'm still not sure where the time has gone. You know, Clona Duke right. is a dog capable of doing a twenty nine twenty at Shelburne Park, and um, perhaps he's you know perhaps. Perhaps it was just one of those runs, you know, there was a bit of bumping and barging and just, you know, 
maybe took away from the time, but in the end, you got to say a fine run by Glengar Martha to get as close as she did. She beat in a short head. Boyle Sports Bob is just simmering under the surface. There's a run in him. We know that. He was up three pounds the other night, but he showed pace again, and it's only a matter of time before he gets loose and does a big run, but Clona Duke is still there. He's, he's the proven he's the proven performer. You know, he was an English Derby finalist last year. He's won the Juvenile Derby in the past, won the select stakes. Just a top-class greyhound, but yeah, he'll need to improve in the clock. Yeah, he will. And, and when you were looking at this race at the start, you thought it was going to be a clean run race. You could see Katunda Kieran and Ben Steady struggling to the bend. And, you know, it just didn't work out that way, did it? It just worked out messy at the corner. But look, as you say, hopefully Ben, ben Steady is OK and, and we'll move on. But, yeah, I was looking back at this race. And like you, I initially thought our oh, Duke must have been held up at the first bend for it to do 30 30. And I looked at the two or three times and to the naked eye, probably only lost a length maximum, didn't he? Now, it's, it's hard to tell because... You don't know if they've all lost length or two at the bend, but just to the naked eye, I thought he only lost a length or so, and the time was probably a little bit disappointing. But look, for the finals of these big events, you don't really care about times, you just care about getting through. And yes. yeah, he did move off on the run to the corner and did bend steady, no favours, and uh, Katunda Kieran, I suppose. But th- that's going to be noticeable going into the semi finals this weekend. Glengar Martha ran a cracker in second place. I thought she was going to get up actually off the last bend. And Boyle Sports Bob, I had a small few quid in him on Saturday night. Um, again, I thought he was out with the washing. Heading down the back straight, he obviously met a bit of trouble. But to go past Katunda Kieran on the run in, Katunda Kieran's a strong enough dog. He is a strong sort. And he went past him fairly handy. I think he beat him by a length for third place. And he's only beaten just over a length himself by Sports Bob. And we know he's much, much better with uh, with a fast start. He, he showed a good bit of early pace when he won a 515 there going back a month or so ago in 29.48. I think that's the fastest time of the year in there so far. Um, so he has an engine. He's well thought of. Yeah, he was three pound up in weight. But I think last time he ran at 73 and he has got former around 75. So, yeah, I'd say he's not far off, off his best. But, um, yeah, look, Clona Duke, he has his draw next weekend. Good performance. Um, Had his track record broken with the weekend, didn't he? But, um, yeah. <laughs> don't, look, all don't, those, say, don't say it to me. Don't upset him. Don't, <laughs> all those three, look, obviously have big chances. Um, But, yeah, Boyle Sports Bob, we'll ask Sam now, is he a big price? Because I think he's been drawn in, as we say, the handier semi-final. And if he's double figures, we might, we might prick our ears up a bit, Sam. Yeah, well, look, listen, the beauty of us, Barry, is we can look at it and be confused and go, where's the time going? What's the story and how do you rate them? We don't have to price it. Sam does. That's the main thing. Sam, this is not an easy one to sort of assess. And I'm sure Clona Duke is still very much up there in the betting. Is he Is he favourite? He certainly is. He's three to one favourite at the moment. Um, echo the sentiments from you two, um, really. You should, you should go double that, Sam. You should go double <laughs> that. He's only doing 30 30, for God's sake. That's it. I mean, I saw the result before I watched the race, and I kind of thought it must have been a real horror show, and it, and it wasn't. I mean, the only thing where I can see is really noticeably lost time is at the, the first sectional. I mean, he's 10 spots slower than last week, and I was having a little bit of a dig through before. And he's he's ran out a trap one twice over this trip, and he's done four fifty four and uh, sorry three fifty four and three fifty nine, which wouldn't be be near where he'd like to be. It, it's it's considerably slower than what he can do. I mean, three forty four week one is 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 a bit of a drop off, really. Yeah. But no, I mean he's a class act. You mentioned the wins last year and the Derby finalist at Toaster and things, and and we obviously have to respect that. We think he'll be a big player there again should he come over for the for the Derby again this year. No, I mean, Boyle Sports, Bob, I know you just asked about it. He's 14 to 1, and I think we we have got a lot of respect for the two dogs behind. There was a little bit of trouble in the race. And Boyle Sports, Bob, although he's not a prolific winner at this stage, he, he does just seem to have something about him where you can you can see it clicking and him posting a big run soon. Yeah, I get the impression, Sam, that you know, given the the nature of the racing thus far in the, in the, in the Easter Cup, and it was something similar last year, I think you remember, the Easter Cup, that... There's nothing really absolutely flashing. So you, you can't keep that very short. And as a result, you also have dogs finishing close up in second and third. Even those that have been beaten, they've been beaten not very far. So all of a sudden, the market has become so much more con- contracted. There's there's so many there with strong claims that even, I guess you say, the outsiders probably, of the whole field is probably 20 to 1. And, but that, that feels right. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because there's not a dog in the competition that can't do a run on the night. No, I mean, it's very easy. If something's won the first two rounds by six lengths, it marks your card fire and it's very easy. Whereas, like you said, we've had a lot of close finishes, no real standout performance. And, and as we mentioned before, 29.73 being the fastest time of the week, it, it shows you that there's nothing miles clear of the rest at the moment, or it certainly doesn't appear to be anyway. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the final heat, uh, which was won by Deadly Jet. 
I've noticed, Sam, that this was a dog that you've been keeping on side. He's actually, he was a shorter price with you for outright honours than he was to win the heat the other night. He's returned 16 to 1. Now, I thought that was about right, believe it or not. Um, but this was one of the rare nights where he actually got it right at traps. And I mean, really got it right. He flew from trap four. Obviously, he's outpaced on the backstrap of Clombrian Treaty. There is nothing wrong with that. Clombrian Treaty is immense. From, from once he gets going mm. in, into the corner down the back straight he isn't quite getting home at present as well Some, similar to Bally McWalt but Deadly Jet was there again rallying to the cause stayed on really stoutly obviously he's very well bred he's a, a half brother to um, the sensational um, Susie Sapphire but you know this was a fine run by, by a dog who Probably was a touched over price the 16 to 1. Hindsight's 20 20 and all that. I wish I'd had a fiver on him. I'm sure Barry was wishing the same. Uh, Clan Brian Treaty, again, he's showing signs that he's coming back to himself. He, he still has, has never really produced his very best at Shelburne Park, but he does show his best pace there. He, he flies into the opening corner, generally off a moderate enough start. Motors down the back straight. He's just not quite getting home at present, but has to be well respected. And Beeper's Lariat, just a model of consistency back in third spot. It didn't happen for Bally McMarino. He missed the kick. He had run so well in, in defeating the opening round. Jetstream Breeze and Nomadic Nova. Nomadic Nova actually is a bit unlucky. He was arriving with a rush into the opening corner. He could have played a big part proceedings, especially if he'd happened to skip around in front. But as it was, Deadly Jet, Clombrine Treat, your ba- uh, Beeper's Lariat. Uh, firstly, let's talk about Deadly Jet, Sam. What sort of price is he now? We've actually got him 12 to 1. I've come in this morning and just trimmed him un- under a point. Um, like I said, I couldn't believe the SP at the weekend. He's a really likeable dog and, and, and he is one that we like when we have our discussions. Is is one that we think is kind of a bit under-respected. So we, uh, we really like him. And, and to back run Clombrian Treaty, I know you said he's not really getting home at the moment, but talk about an Irish leisure winner last year. And he's, he's come past it on the running after getting a little bit of trouble. So I really like him. I think any kind of bother, and he's going to be a big player. The flip side is he's drawn what appears to be the hardest heat. Had he been in the semi-final number two, I think I'd have had to be quite a bit shorter again. Yeah. Barry, talk us through Jet, Deadly Jet. Um, yeah, I wasn't too happy because I'm a big fan of Deadly Jet and I didn't have a red cent on him on Saturday night. Probably because Carol wasn't there, so he wasn't any weird about him. But no, look, I backed him to win an A1 race at the start of the month at six to four. And look, he was a dog that was competing against Highview Splash at the back end of last year in the Juvenile Derby. I think he 29, 28-20. Uh, I think he maybe suffered with confidence a little bit. He went down to Limerick. It didn't really work for him. He got a couple of rough rides. And, um, you know, when you're running against top, top company, as he was, just their puppy status. and things we, just we, didn't we, go we, we spoke before racing and we were talking to Eugene Price, who obviously is great pals with Carl Ransbottom. We were yeah. talking about Deadly Jet. And we said he just he just needs space, doesn't he? he? He's at he's at that situation now in his life where he just needs that moment of space just to get going. And, and he got it the other night, obviously. He made it himself. Yeah, well, he has the engine. He certainly has the engine as he showed it when he was a puppy. And um, yeah, look, he took a flyer three forty eight. He done three forty nine last week, but it didn't look as good to the eye, I think, because he it looked the others around him obviously didn't come away as well. But to um, uh, he looked as though he was in trouble down the back straight when Clan Brian Treaty went past him. And especially off the last bend. And then he switched wide of Conbrain Treaty around the bottom bend. Not even on the home straight. He, he checked out wide off the bottom bend. And you thought that was it. It was game over. Because I originally went down to back Conbrain Treaty. I ended up back in Valley McMarino because you told me to. But, um, <laughs> so I was sick. I said, oh, uh, Conbrain Treaty is going to win. But to go by him at the pace he did up the home straight, he absolutely flew by him and wins by a length and a half uh, at the end. Conbrain Treaty, for me, he's just not the same dog around Shelbourne Park as he is anywhere else. He's, he's two from 14 around Shelbourne. Now, I know he's been running in good company, but for a dog of his ability, two from 14 around Shelbourne, you know, you'd expect him to be doing better. He's got great records around everywhere else. And, and look, that was his third run of the year, so he should be approaching peak fitness. And to think that he was given Swords, Le- Swords Rex a start and a beating in the ledger, you know, coming from yeah. behind him. And now he's struggling to hold off Deadly Jet. Look, Deadly Jet's a fast, fast dog, 30-10. He wouldn't go into the next round with chances. And Beeper's Larry, it must be very frustrating for Jack Kennelly because he's a dog with a huge, huge engine, but he just keeps missed time in the start. I think it was in your father's race, the, the plate last year, semi-final, he was electric, he got, got everything right. And then in the final again, he's just sluggish at the start. And look, he's a huge, huge engine, that dog, but just keeps on missing the break. And you can't afford to do it in that company. And yeah, speaking of missing the break, Barry Mac Marino, uh, his supporters knew their fate very early. Yeah, pretty early, all right. Um, talk to me, um, we've, you've told us what Deadly Jet is. Um, Sam, what, what price are we talking about, Clumbrine Treaty and Beeper's Lariat? We've got 12 to 1 Clombrian Treaty and Beeper's Lariat is the joint outsider at 28. He um, 
has touched on. He's, he's just leaving it behind at the start. He's, he's not showing much early pace at the moment. And he had a dream run to get up and qualify at the weekend. I thought everything went right for him around the last two bends to kind of get there and go through. Yeah, you're in a good position. Like the only one that you're not fearing is the wrong term, but you know the only one with sort of any real liability is Juby's fidget. Um, you're in a position now where you can just kick on and lay what you need. That's the plan, hopefully. Uh, hopefully. But no, yeah, I mean we we are very fearful of her. Um, certainly, I, like I said, I was there when she posted a big run last year at Sheffield, and I know she's she's got that big run in the locker. It's it's not quite there yet. It's not quite been happening. But what better time than the semi final and final? Yeah, that'd be true. She did put a big run on the card on March second, Barry. You know that night it was it was raised at twenty slow off at twenty eight seventy six. If they're raising at twenty slow, you can be sure it's nearly a half a second slow. And um, I thought that was a hell of a run that night. Like she left, she left good bitches standing that night, Barry. And if she can produce another run like that, she she can certainly make them all run. Yeah, she can. Like as I say, she, she done nothing wrong there last week, and it was a good run, the twenty eight fifty, and and it was her winning distance that night. She won by six or seven lengths that night as well. So. Whatever about the time, sometimes times can be a little bit deceiving, but to beat a good field like that by six lengths, you know it's a hell of a run. And yeah, she's as I say, she's not with Rob that long. She's only with, this is maybe only her fifth or sixth run with Rob Gleason. So um yeah, I'm sure there's still more to come. As Sam says she's got good form across the water and uh, yeah, she's got a good draw on Saturday night. Yeah, she's got top class form across the water, great one form. Um Sam, what's your idea of the winner? I think he sorry, semi final one has the potential to be messy. I think Clona Duke, should he get a run, he'd be the one we'd want to keep on side in the final. I think he's just about the classiest dog left in the competition. He's, like I said, I can see him being a derby dog this year, maybe both derbies, um, if he if he takes both in. But he is, he is a huge runner when everything goes right. But I am very fearful of the draw at the weekend. It was touched on earlier about how connections of one and two would love to swap them around if they could, and I'm sure they'd both be in agreement but it doesn't work like that. And and I think, in a way, almost him missing the break again out of trap one would be beneficial. I think Highview Splashes was a lot faster on the clock at the sectional time last week, faster on the clock overall. And I don't think it would be the worst case to turn second to it. Yeah, but surely Bobby McWalt is going to be up there on the outside, Clambrian Treaty as well. Like, it, I... It's it's a strange it's a strange contest. Uh, Phil Donaldson from the Racing Post got in touch yesterday with me just to ask me what was the trap draw. So I sent on the picture of the trap draw, and he said he just replied a few minutes later. Uh, four heat winners in the same heat. Is that a sackable offence? <laughs> I'll tell you what. I said it was a few heads scratching their heads over in the weigh room when the draw was made on Saturday night. Uh, we we'll just go through that opening heat: Clone of the Duke, Highview Splash, Deadly Jet, Undulation, Barry McWalt, and Clon Brian Treaty. Barry, it's an overused cliche, but it would be fitting of the final itself. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking when I seen the draw. The same thing happened in the in the derby last year, isn't it? Semi finals, they were they were quite lopsided. But if you look at heat one and you look at the real real early pacers, I think the two real early pacers in that race are, are Bally McWalt and Flamboyant Treaty. Um, I really do like uh, you'd respect uh Colin the Duke, Highview Splash, Deadly Jet can fly to the corner as well. So I think those three hold the key to the race because let's be honest, if those three turn in front, no matter how good you are, you're not going to be coming from behind them. I know they're not the strongest runners in the world as they've shown, well especially. Bally McWalt and Clonbrain Treaty, but Clonbrain Treaty, although we sort of pinned him a bit, like he should be coming on. I know that was his tour run, but he could yeah. be just coming on and he could just lead. Him yeah. or Bally McWalt could just it lead. It has him. the makings. Like if you purely go on what we've seen over the last two weeks, um, it has the makings of a situation where you'd have three out front, probably all not getting home. And then three coming at them. Like it could be a a, a tea towel finish, as I say. You know, getting six dogs oh. crossing the line within within a yard or two of each other. In theory, that could happen. Yeah, don't well, obviously. What's the tea towels are in your house? But we'll go to beach towel. <laughs> but yeah, so, it, it could be. It, it, it's it's a it's a it's a look a deadly semi final for you is a better word. But um, as a layer, you'd you'd be taking on anything in that race because you've got five real live ones running for you. So. It's got to be a five to two the field race, isn't it? Five to two, eleven to four the field race. Like, what do you, what do you mark, mark favourite there? If you could lay anything in there at three to one, you would, because you, you genuinely have five good ones running you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam, what's your idea of the winner of that opening heat? Honestly, I think it's so hard. I think, like I said, the draw is going to be so important. The one and two, you'd love to swap, and I'm not sure the three, four, five, six are, are too right either. I think they'd all rather be a touch further out than they are. Obviously, the exception being the six dog Clombry and Treater. I think it was just touched on whatever leads is going to run a monster race because it looks like there could be a bit of scrimmaging at the corner. 
And if you can cut a length or two clear here, you're going to take a lot of picking up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you could. I think they could bet that quite hard. Yeah, you know, I think there's plenty of opinions in that race. You can certainly make claims for each and every one of them. Barry, what 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 would be your idea of the winner? Um, I, I certainly won't be having a bet, but probably just on the trap draw, you just have to go for Clona Duke. Like he's been there, he's done it. He has the draw on the inside. There's not a lot separating any of these on the run to the corner. And look, I know I said the, the bottom two chances are leading, but they're just not quite getting home. And Clona Duke's been getting home. Uh, challenged hard last week by Glengar Martin. He, he's sticking it out a little bit better. So just on the draw, you'd have to side with Clona Duke, but my fiver will be staying firmly in my pocket. Yeah, I'd say Clona Duke would be the selection on top of the card. That doesn't mean it'll be overly fancy. I mean, I think it's very tough. Um, on to the second heat. Um, one is Drupy's Fidget, two Beepers Lariat, three Hookham, four Boyle Sports Bob, five Glengar Martha, and six Sonia in Grande. Like, you know, all due respect, it's the weaker of the heats. There's no question about it. That's the heat where you want it to be drawn, uh, and and trap draw will have a big say in in the in in the in the outcome. Um, well, Sam, over to you. This is this tricky? Very tricky. I think there's there's a lot of strong runners here, and and similar sense is really if you can go a length or two clear here, there's a lot of dogs that are strong runners and will just home. Um, touched on it earlier. Hookham posted a very good time at the weekend in in respect to the other runners in the competition. Now the times did look a bit strange at the weekend. But he's also done a four, sorry, a 3.51 during the competition, which would put him right there at the bend in this race. And if he were to turn handy enough, you'd, you'd have to give him a big chance. You're, you're making the man, you're making the man uh, which you're very happy. I think Barry's a fan. Barry, did you nibble at 50s each way? Yeah, I'm all aboard the Hookham train at 50 to 1. Just <laughs> last week when we knew the first seat was going to be a five-dog race, I just thought he would certainly qualify and at 50 to 1. Uh, some firms were playing the first four, so I took a bit of that. And then when we realized it was going to be a four dog race, we had to go in again, you know, because yeah, all aboard the two train. So, look, I was delighted when I seen the draw. It is a softer uh, semi final, so I'm just hoping he can get through. As as Sam has said, he has a good section. Look, he does lack that yard of fairly pace, but he's very, very capable of flashing from traps. And when you look on his inside, Beepers Larry has a habit of missing the break. Droopy's fidget, yeah, on occasion she can't fly to the corner, but she's not blessed with electric early speed, you know that way. And, and we do know that Hookham can take a flyer. Now, look, he'll lead to because I think if he, if he turns behind Beepers Larry and Droopy's fidget, obviously something on his outside is going to lead him as well. So I think he'll need to take a flyer and, and hopefully edge the defence. That's what, what I'm pinning my hopes on. But I, I think the favourites in this race will be Boyle Sports Bob and Glengar Mart. I think they'll be near enough joint favourites, maybe Glengar Martin will go off favourite. There's not a lot of early pace in the inside, let's be honest. Boyle Sports Bob, he hasn't been flying to the corner, but he can go up strongly, and I think this makeup really does uh, really does suit him. As I say, there's no early pace on his left, um, and he has an engine. As you said, he's, he's just simmering under under the surface there. He's ran two races in defeat there that a lot of things went wrong from. He wasn't beat all that far. Last week, in the first round, he looked as though he was gone. If you had a, an anti-post ticket, you were, you were tearing it up, and he somehow managed to qualify. But, um, yeah, we know the Hennessy's like him. There's a big, big run in him. As he showed at the start of the year, he has clocked 29.48 over this trip, and that's, what, four weeks ago? Four or five weeks ago? That was so, a hell of a run, yeah. That was a hell of a run. So he has an engine, and he has a great makeup in here. So, look, I'm hoping Hookham can sneak through for Adam Dunford, fingers crossed, but um, I might have a few good on Boyle Sports Bob on Saturday night. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Nostradamus wouldn't make a prediction in this one, but um, I think if she can re repeat anything like her early form from the Gold Cup, I think Glengar Martha will emerge as the one to beat. If if she had produced one or two of those runs in this competition, she'd be fairly short for this. She'll end up being my selection, I'm, I'm, I've no doubt. But again, she's just not quite at that same level at the moment. But a flying start could could certainly rectify that. It's a, it's an intriguing it's an intriguing classic. Um, two intriguing semi finalists look forward to on Saturday night at Shelburne Park. If you can get there, it comes uh, highly recommended. It should be some wonderful, wonderful racing. And um, yeah, that's the Bresbet Easter Cup. Lots to look forward to in the coming weeks. We've only, what, less than a minute and a half of action left in the competition. But by God, it's going to be very, very intriguing uh, action all the same. Uh, Sam, I think we'll let you go at this point. Uh, you're a busy yeah. man. You're you're going to be out there laying all these favourites, short uh, short ones, and, and, and hoping for the right results. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. No problem, Sam. See you Thanks next very year. much indeed. Cheers. Yeah, absolutely. Best, this time next year. See you later, mate. Bye-bye. Now, Barry, as the famous song goes, 
I used this joke a couple of weeks ago. Just the two of us. Here we are talking about the Conan Annie Kirby Memorial. Um, it's safe to say, Barry, that this one has grown in importance through the years. It was always hugely important. Eighty thousand euro to the winner. That that prize is it has been maintained through the years. It's seen the emergence of some sensational talents, but more particularly, the last four to five years have been stronger than the first number of years. I think people are now, you know, as we've said you know, ad nauseum over the last two or three years, people aren't buying a Derby dog anymore. They're buying a dog with the Kirby in mind to then take on the Derby. And, you know, obviously it's for the whelps, let's say, from the previous crop, shall we say. So like this year was open to, to 22 whelps and by God, we have a few fast ones out there. Um, sensational action at Limerick on Saturday night, but I think we have to start with uh, Ballymac Danica. Yeah, and rightly so. Uh, what a run it was. it was. We were watching it in Shelburne Park. Didn't quite see the time at, at the time as you were watching the race. But um, yeah, when you're looking back at it, uh, what a run it was. It beat a decent field, a top class field by five and a half lengths. She'd always promised to be an absolute superstar. As you know, Liam Dowling starts them off early. This bitch caught 29 30 at 13 months old. Like, what a run that was. And she then followed it up a couple of months later in Shelburne Park, clock in 1860 for a sprint. So, I'm sure they knew at 13 months old that this was going to be a superstar. Probably didn't envisage her breaking the track record at Limerick a few months later on. But um, wow, yeah, like she's a beautiful size as well for the bit. She's 67 pounds. She's an extremely, uh, extremely well bred. Like what a pedigree she has. Her dam is 2870 around Shelburne. We know all that. Valley Mark Minta. So look, the future is 770. 2770, yes, yeah, sorry, excuse me, 2870 for the 550 maybe she has. Uh, champion stakes winner, yeah. champion stakes winner, of course. Yeah, exactly, what's that, 23 uh, spots off the track record in Shelburne, yeah. so, yeah, she's uh, like, like, if, you look, if you look at our card, Barry, like this, this was her seventh start of the evening, like her second mark in the card was a solo in Shelburne, 1868, uh, she wins on debut in 2894, minus 40 at Clamel, again, if they're saying it's minus 40, it's certainly minus 60. Uh, she does 28.39 in her next race, uh, 10 slow, 28.34, 10 slow. And then she's beaten a half length in the final of the Rural Kennels Open on race down at Clomel by Romeo Taylor. Then she comes to Shelburne Park, 28.10 trial, 28.24 trial. Um, she She's beaten in a 5.50-yard race at Shelburne at 8 to 13. And, you know, her, her clock is 30-32 behind the winner doing 30-14. But that doesn't tell a story. Like, she had no right to finish as close she did that night. She found all sorts of traffic problems. She then goes to Tralee. And if, I, I, I felt on the night she probably lacked a little bit of tactical speed when it was needed mm. and still managed to get up. But again, she's only having her sixth start, you know what I mean? And she's led, yeah. you know, two or three of those runs. There was a bit of talk that something had gone sensationally fast in a trial around Limerick. And uh, I have a I feeling think we know which one Bally, it was. I think now. it might have been Bally McDanica because the other evening, 2783, it was over from earlier, 123. She does a 1588, which is, you know, sensational yeah. running to the third bend. But if you actually then take her third bend split home, well, that's really home, yeah. where she does her running. You know, that's that's where the track record comes in from the third bend home. Nothing could live with her on that clock. And yeah, just a mag magical performance to kick off the Kirby. 27.83, say it again. That's just simply unbelievable. When you think about the dogs that have raced around Limerick yeah. over the last three to four years and the track has been going well and none could get close to that. Yeah, it's, uh, as you say, the dogs that have run down there, even the last couple of winners, you know, like the Sword Rex and and the previous, the track record holder who we spoke about in Shelburne Park, Clona Duke, um, like there's been some sensational dogs running around there the last two, three years. Even when we were starting back on, on Talking Dogs TV, going back a while ago, um, some real stars around at that time. But um, Bally McDonough, yeah, as you say, there's no there's no weakness in that performance. At 123, uh, I think it's, that's as quick as I've I seen in the fourth round. And then 1588, and then she's storming home as well. So, look, um, she has to keep doing it because the, the competition is so good. There's no room for error, but... Um, you certainly wouldn't mind having her. And as you say, it's only her sixth race and she's a bitch with a huge, huge future. So hopefully she comes out of this safe and sound and I'm sure it'll be all go for the Oaks, but let's concentrate on the Kirby first. Yeah, much, much like in the Easter Cup, that first tease, uh, our cracker was second to her, posting 28-21, yeah. joint second fastest qualifier. Um, even Radical Harry, who was beaten nine and a half lengths in 28-49, was, was one of the fastest qualifiers. Yeah. I thought he ran a fine race, Radical Harry. I thought our cracker ran a, an absolute cracker. Uh, but Radical Harry was only having just a second start. So, listen, he can only go and improve. He's yeah, imagine going home and saying to somebody... 28-18 in debut, like, you know. That's what I'm saying. Going home to somebody, how did the dog get on? I used that 10 lengths, but he's still on 28-50, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, there was one other performance I wanted to touch on before we sort of glance through them all. Uh, Droopy's metaphor. 
uh, racing in heat nine. You mentioned earlier on that um, Robert Gleeson has a has his dogs flying at present. He also has a flying kennel. You know, he has sensationally fast kennel. This is a brother to Caracino who was who was beaten, but um will be a player in the Kirby, have no doubt. But Drupi's metaphor is a brother of Caracino and before he ran his first race at Cork last week, he was well beaten at Cork. It didn't happen for him, missed a missed kick and, and found traffic. Um, but before he had run that first race, Robert had suggested to me that, you know, I know they all say they have one at home that's faster, but he suggested that Caracino is very fast. He said, but I think the brother is every bit as fast, but with more early. And I think that's a potent combination. This doc looked a proper greyhound. There's only a second start. It was the first time he got loose in a race. Heat nine. You know, he's taken on the likes of, you know, Kulavaniato and, and Kilcolgan and Mick, who've shown immense promise um, already in their careers around Tralee and Limerick. But Trippi's metaphor made it look easy. 1590 to the third bend. You know, by some margin, the second fastest to the third bend of all the heats at 28-21. I thought it was a very, very, very fine display from this very promising youngster. Yeah, you're not wrong. And if, if Rob Leeson says he has a fast one, it must be quite fast because he has plenty of fast ones, let me yeah. tell you. But yeah, such a, like he's so raw. He's only had a, that's only his second start. Qualified okay, 29 odd and 1880, I think, around Shelburne Park. But uh, yeah, to produce the run he did, as you say, against a top class field, including Pula Van Yotto, who, who just needs to sharpen up a little bit in the early pace department. Um, but yeah, it was a huge run. And, and you mentioned before race that, racing that Rob did like him. So yeah. Uh, yeah, 28, 21, 15, 90 to the third bend. And like of all the, okay, I know we were talking about Bally McDonough having only her sixth race. This is only his second race. So yeah. he can only go one way and that's improve. And if he keeps showing that early pace, he don't know, one, was it 120, 128, I think, was it 120, something something slick anyway to, to the open bend. But then still 15, 90 is where you get a better handle on a section. And uh, yeah, if he can improve on that, he will lead almost anything. And yeah, there's more improvement to come most definitely. Yeah, let's let's flick through the heats, and I mean, like we we don't have all that long. Um, it, it stop me if something caught your eye in defeat. Uh, we'll talk about the winners generally, and we'll, we'll give a mention to one or two of those in behind. But 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 stop me if if you want to mention something. Mm-hmm. Um, the opening heat, um, Swords Hero, good start for Graham Holland. Got got loose into the opening corner. Um, you know, it's great to see Barbara Lowndes and and Leonard having another good one and um, to challenge. I don't think he's quite Swords Rex class, but do you know what? He's made a very good start to his career. This was a twenty eight thirty six run, so it's no slouch of a run. Um, he could certainly develop. He's only a September twenty two bred in the purple. I like the way he went about it. Like he he. He did take a bump at the first and second bet, or first and one and a half. I have it down as so he can certainly approve. Tarzan Masai, huge run, huge run in second. Like this is another dog having only a second start, twenty eight eighty four in Thurless, and you know, really, really ran well. I, I, I've written down on my card fast, circled a couple of times. Thought he ran a big race in defeat. And Ocean Tesla caught my eye in third spot for uh, our old pal Tom Fitz because this one absolutely hammered home. Uh, not a bad way to start the Kirby. No, just it's set down a good marker, all right, didn't it? And uh, yeah, I don't think uh, Barbara and Leonard will have one as good as Sword Trex for a long time. But look, Sword Hero done nothing wrong. He was brave going to the corner, a couple up his inside there. He's had a couple of runs around there. and um, That was his third race around there at Limerick. So that would certainly stand at home. And he had posted 126. I think he done 125 there last night and clocking 28 36. Look, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Again, you, like all of them, you'd expect him to improve. He's, he's very well bred. But yeah, Tarsal Masai. Certainly did catch the eye. He would be the one you take out of the race. But um, yeah, Sword Hero, if he keeps doing those sectionals, we were talking about Bally McDonough doing 123. And he's twice now. He's on 125 and 126 and posting 28, 36. So lots to like about him. Yeah, uh, just Tarzna, Tarzna um, Masai there in second. If you go back a couple of generations, there is a fair bit of Limerick form there, um, closely related to Skywalker Rory, her Great, great Dan was a sister to Skywalker Rory, who won a ledger around Limerick. Just, just worth pointing out there. Uh, Jeff Parnaby knows the time of day. Really impressed with him in defeat. Can only improve in the second start. Fine display by Swords Hero. And again, Ocean Tesla. Good to see Tom Fitz with one. He'll be delighted to be in the second round. He'll be chuckling away to himself as as he does. Um, it didn't happen for the remainder. Scooby Countess just lost her pitch in the opening corner. She was favoured. She would have been expected to go well in the competition, but again, just out of luck. Uh, onto the second heat and um. Here, sadly, uh, Baby Bacco took a bad tumble. Bally Mac Patriot, the juvenile classic winner, was balked at the opening corner. When in front, um, a little bit unlucky. It would be interesting to see what he would have clocked had he got around in front. But he did qualify in fourth. That's the main thing. Um, instead, the verdict went to Norris Ben, who was in good position. Sean Conway, we've spoken a lot about him in, in recent weeks and months. Um, Barry, he's doing it right. He's got some really nice dogs, but he also knows how to handle them. 
Yeah, he does have some really nice dogs, and he done done really well with a lot of water news around Shelburne Park this year, didn't he? He won an awful lot of races for him. I think won maybe nine or ten races around there. So Sean, yeah, he's he's really making a name for himself, and, he, and he's getting a better quality of dog as well, which is good to see. So and the Warwick Ben is right up there. Look, he did take advantage of a bit of trouble at the first Ben, but you have to take a chance when you're there. Once once Bally Mac Patriot trapped like he did, I thought he was going to do a huge run. But in fairness to Romeo Falco, he showed good early pace to just try and nip up his inside, and he caused the trouble for Bally Mac Patriot. Look, good to see the two of them go through. Uh, Merit's inclusion split them in third place, but yeah, I still think there's a big run in Romeo Falco to to go up the inside and almost get the bend off Bally McPatriot. You know how fast Bally McPatriot is, and um, so those two have big futures, and I'd certainly be keeping an eye on Romeo Falco and Bally McPatriot going forward. Yeah, I'll add Merit's inclusion. I absolutely loved him in his first two races. Was he the dog that ran in the sort of unraced day at Shelbourne? He yeah. looked a bit. Look yeah. at the green with his style. He, yeah, he yeah, still yeah. looks green. Like he ran yeah. off the opening corner of the night, but he shows pockets of pace. But yeah, I, I think with the penny, I think with the penny drops with him, he, he's got he's got a serious engine. Uh, on to heat three. Now, do you remember John Delaney said? John Delaney said that there should be thirty three teams in the in the World Cup. Uh, let Ireland in. Remember that? I think they said that. They really said that. As Seth Blatter once said in the comment in the in the press that. conference. I think we have to get Mustang Fever back in the competition. We need to start a petition. I know there's no reserves allowed in, but come on. That was just oh, ridiculous. Like, heartbreaking. I was watching the replay of this race because I didn't see it live in Shelbourne and I was going, how does Far win this? And then, oh, oh yeah. We yeah. watched this. We watched this with a collective grown Mustang fever. Did everything right out front. She's galloping on nicely, sixteen, sixteen to the third bench. You, you'd imagine she's doing a twenty-eight, thirty run. Happy days into the second round of the um, Kirby Memorial Toolmaker Bud, a dog who'd shown plenty of pace in, in previous outings. Um, had, you know, had been little sort of maybe miniature signs and whatnot. But uh, yeah, the other evening he, he did definitely take exception to Mustang fever. I think he, he she caught his eye and. Yeah, the rest, as they say, is history. Uh, both of them are afraid out of the competition. Um, Quarry Boy was, was then in a lovely position, it has to be said. And Paula Heffernan has had one or two dogs that have gone very well around Limerick in the past. It's a track that's been lucky for them. A uh, country legend, I, I'm certainly thinking of. Did they also have a? Did they also have a Kirby finalist memorial? Did they have a f- semi finalist or finalist? I'm not sure. I'll have to check that one out. Uh, yeah, look, he took advantage of it. He was well behind at the stage, wasn't he? Probably six or seven minutes behind. But um, look, it's just one of those things in Greyhound racing. Nothing you can do. No fault of Rob Leeson's. You, you really do feel for Pat Kilfoyle. She was doing a, a hell of a run. She's a nice bitch, this run. And yeah, as we spoke um, before we came on air about the, I think it's called the Sean O'Connor Connor Cup. They usually run for dogs that would be knocked out in the first and second round. Uh, if that competition goes ahead, that would be hot. That will be hot, and I'm sure most times favor will be given. Don't I'll make it one bomb. That that will be hot if yeah. if they all go forward. That will be hot. Yes, no well, question. You gotta feel. You gotta feel for them. I think it's uh, a. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I must him. also say you also have to feel for Robert and Willie because yeah, like, the fast do. dog and, and, I, and I'm not saying because their dog is out because what their dog did to the other dog you know they would be feeling it you know what I mean it's not it's not a case of ah well you know my dog did what he did you know what I mean you feel for and, the other and look he, he has pace doesn't he he has yeah, certainly, does, pace. Yeah, he certainly has pace they always have pace uh, Romeo yeah, yeah. Kingping and Balnabula Jim Balnabula Jim big 90 pounds of him back in third spot Kyle Torn Coco qualified at a big price back in fourth on to heat four and here we saw, I, I thought this was really taking display by Naki and Dazzler. I really like this fellow for Daniel Rahali, a, a son of Law Hill Blake and Love Island. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Love Island would be the, the Matthews breeding as well. Yeah. Um, Law Hill Blake is where he's got his early speed, 1604, 2848, professional as you like in his eighth start. He has a bit of form around Limerick, some good form around Tralee. Just lots to like about this dog, given his early speed. He can certainly be one you, you'll keep an eye on. Yeah, it was really good, good like good professional performance, as you say, good early pace, made all. He had a nice trial around there prior to the stake, eighteen fifty for the three fifty, which is some going, you know the way. So he obviously has a big engine. Um the thing about being drawn out in sixes or a wide seat around there, you're, you're always gonna get six with the amount of um inside seats in the competition. So you certainly want to keep on the right side of and uh, yeah, as you say, never done anything wrong. A good pedigree, Love Island, I think he might be the damn off that is a Burj Khalifa. Maybe could be, yeah, yeah, could be, yeah. yeah. I think he, Soul I think he could be a half brother. Right, yeah. So, yeah, I think he could be a half brother too. Forge Khalifa, so a decent pedigree. And um, the Ball Falcon ran well back in second place. He was well supported on the night. Finished quite well. And that's two of the Bally not, 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 not just on the night. It has to be said that um, in uh, previous Boyle Sports yeah. certainly. I know they put him in at twelve to one, being cautious because he has been well supported for both derbies already. He was mm. six to one favorite before the off of the competition. 
Yeah, he's 28 13 on debut, hasn't he? So, like, for, um, cash for him. From what I've seen of him thus far, massive engine, massive yeah. engine. But it's to the corner where he, he's just going to need to find it. Um, he, he at the moment he looks a real 600 yard greyhound, but there's no question there's a huge runs in him. And um, who's to say that won't happen? This was only his third start, but he's going to need to find that yard early or, or else he, he's going to get lost. But no, it was a big run in second, you know, after missing the kick and finding himself only third off the opening corner to finish as close as he did was it was a good enough achievement. Bally Doyle baby was third, and the Foxy Devil qualifying back, I beg your pardon, the Foxy Devil was out. It may boy Zada. It was the was the third or the fourth qualifier there. Um, um, not Gene Dazzler. Yep, nice dog. Lots to take out of that race for him. Um, I'm sure there'll be plenty of interest. He's a dog that looks like he could be a. He looks one for across the water, doesn't he? With that early speed, mm, you know, he's yeah, been a yeah, bucket yeah. load of race. You could see him challenging for major honors, and you know, many of the tracks, the Central Parks, Monmores of this world. Um, not Gene Dazzler. It'd be interesting to see if they do get interest for him. A uh, heat five went to Rushy Meadows. I know the uh, Matthews clan have thought an awful lot of this lady. She ran very well in the Puppy Oaks at Shelburne Park the back end of last year. I think she was still pretty much in her season dates to that competition, so she's entitled to improve for it. Recent trials would suggest she's improving, improving, improving. 28-31 off a, what I would describe as a missed start for her she had great track craft hit the front off the second bend joined down the back straight should I say uh, joins in good time down the back straight it only takes up really on the third bend goes on to win in 28-31 professional as you like and um, yeah I think definitely definitely you could take two lengths off this run for her she has to be a leading player Barry yeah, she does. And I know speaking to Damien Matches uh, back in the last year, they really do like her. She only went down by, uh, was it a short head or a neck in the, yeah. in the race? Sing, to know. sing along, Dolly. That hasn't exactly. worked out too bad. No, the form is all right there, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you for actually. But yeah, they do like her. She has done some good runs. And uh, yeah, 28 31. It wasn't, okay, Bally McDonough aside, it was up there with one of the better runs of the night. And yeah, there's more improvement to come. Again, that's her first race since November, similar to the bitch in Shelburne Park um, in the Easter Cup. So. Yeah, she can only go one way, and as I say, they do like her, and and they certainly do know the time of day the matches. And if they say they like one, you've got to sit up and take take notice again. Lovely size of a big sixty six pound, and I'm sure she can only improve. Yeah, I see she's representing uh, Skeeton. Uh, I, I, oh, think that, I think I think that's I think that's Joe's uh, Joe's club. He'll be uh, he'll be, be singing yeah, a song about this one at like some point. I'm sure uh, the <laughs> Joe show will continue. I'm sure through the ledger. Um, moving on to Heat Six, it just mentioned there in good time. I thought ran well. I thought ran well in defeat. Um, was nip and tuck down to the third bend, and Rushy Meadows at the inside line. That that made a difference. Now as it was, she won three lengths, but that was a good run in second spot. Um, on to heat six, and this was another one for um this fellow Liam Dowling seems to have a a grasp of the game. Uh, Bally Max Sennon, um, only his fourth start had had really caught the eye in his previous outing at Limerick. Um, it didn't happen for him at Tralee in the Juvenile Classic, but clearly they thought enough of him to put him into that competition. But Bally Max Sennon, um. You know, early pace, led near one, plus rest, 16.04, one of the fastest to the third bend of the whole competition. Just really liked the way he went about it. Kilcolgan Whitney was second. It ran on quite well. One Groucho's Finn. It was a dead heat between rural uh, Romeo Taylor and Prince Nassim for fourth spot. Didn't happen for Fay Point Harvey. 28.33, thought the winner was certainly the dog to take out of the race. Yeah, and we spoke about Bally McDonough earlier on, clocking 29.30 at 13 months old. This fellow's in 29.50. 13 months old for a 76 pound dog which is a good run and it shows you what they thought of him straight away because his next line of form he's beaten a length and a half by Bally Mac Walt in a sprint yeah. trial so for to wow. put a raw pup in in against Bally Mac Walt and he's only beaten a length and a half he's clocking 20 or 70 and 46 so he's a dog with a big big engine yeah really likeable performance the other night again the way it seeds you're going to get the draw going through so yeah he's he's a really nice dog uh, again with a, with a beautiful pedigree as you'd expect coming from what, what, I, what I like about him is the fact that you look at his card Improve, 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 yeah. improve, improve. We don't know where he's going to end up. Like, no, you don't know the season. If he was doing 28 seconds in two weeks' time, would it be a surprise to you? No, it wouldn't be. No, it wouldn't be, no. especially with the output he's with. And, uh, yeah. Look, I know sometimes you take times with a pinch of salt, but the win in the way he did, eight and a half left winner, so uh, nothing wrong with that performance whatsoever. Yeah. No, no, fine display. Um, the rest really never got involved. Kilcock Whitney, as I said, came through for second spot. That's a pacey litter, that Razzle Dazzalani. Yeah. Of course, she, she was a talent herself. She won the last ever Grand National, um, Razzle Dazzalani, down around Curry in Park. A heat seven. This was a, a fine display of early speed by Feshti's Mo, 16-14. Lots to like about that. But in the end, Balnabola Bill w- was too close. Um, Obviously, a full brother, full younger brother to Balnabola Ed. He can run a bit. Um, he stayed on well to win in 28-61. He'll need to be going faster in future. 
um, didn't happen for YI Bonnie Lad, Nisfarna, Bolt, or, or Epic Chick. Epic Chick came through to qualify in third spot, but it really was about the front two for 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 much of the contest. I didn't say. Yeah, look, it was about the front two, as you say, but um, this doggy the win around him like before in twenty eight forty eight when making all and look, he done a one twenty nine on that occasion, one thirty seven there last night, made a little bit of trouble, so. There's more to come from him. He caught twenty eight sixty one on uh, Saturday night. Yeah, it didn't happen for YI Bonnie Laddie went down there with a big reputation. He was very good around Shelburne at the back of last year for Martin Langley. Um look, he was there there about to the third bend, look highly likely to qualify and I think he just had the back legs taken away from him. So I wonder will he go for the, the, the Sean O'Connor Cup? You, you never know. Um with with, 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 with like with the greatest respect, he, he's a one trick pony, but it's just that he's very good at that one trick. He gets off the front and he wins. Yeah. He, the other oh, night, he missed a kick and he didn't get to the front. And that was that. But he, he still looked like qualifying. He, he certainly was going to qualify, I think. But um, yeah, look, balling the ball of Bill, as you say, well-bred, uh, little brother to Ed. And I think there's more to come from him, as I say. He he uh, he has gone up to the bend quicker in, in the in the past. And I'm sure he'll come on an awful lot in that 28-60 run. Nice to see Pat Buckley have a winner on the night. Because, uh, it wasn't a night to remember. No, it wasn't. He rang me. I was in Marley Park on Sunday morning when the phone rang. I said, Pat Buckley. And I went, Oh, uh, he says, well, how are you, lad? And I went, better than you. He says, I'm all right. He says, I'm all right. Ed is fine. That was the main thing. Or Ted was fine, should I say, yeah, not yeah, Ed. Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, yeah, it wasn't a night to remember. Um, we'll we'll pass over Heat 8, uh, Bally McDanick. There's not much to talk about in that one, really, was there? Um, sensational again from Aaron oh. Cracker and Radical here, Harry. Uh, Kulavani Poppy, another one for Pat Buckley. Found traffic, but she qualified back and forth spot. We saw plenty from her in Newbridge. We'll touch again on Newbridge in, in the coming minutes. Um, Heat 9. And um, we also mentioned this troopy's metaphor. And um, we didn't really get into those in behind. I thought Kulavani Otto, while he finished fourth, I thought he again showed his power and pace uh, and that he could certainly be a player in the competition. He'll need to sharpen up early. Serene Rex was making his debut. Like a big run in second spot by Serene Rex for, for Michael O'Donovan. Um, like he's doing 2870, but like, but it's 2870 sort of looking at a dog running away in the distance. You know what I mean? It's a fine display by a dog making his debut. He's bred in the purple. Bally, a droopy Sydney, Bally McOrna. Bally McOrna was top class in her very short career. Um, yeah, he's one to keep an eye on. Romeo Jackson qualified as well. But yeah, lots to like about Serene Rex. Yeah, look, we touched on the winner of Droopy's metaphor for Rob Gleason, but Serene Rex, as you say, yeah, making his debut. Um, 2870 is an impressive debut as well. And you did mention his, his, uh, his dam, Bally McOrna. Um, I think she went well in the. Brownstown Tango uh, puppy out at Newbridge which we will touch on in a while so yeah she was a top class bitch I think she reached, reached uh, AA Open in, in her short career so yeah he's a good pedigree and he, he's with a decent trainer too in Michael O'Donovan Philip Aniato look he's buckets of pace but you're just starting to worry about his his, uh, his lack of early pace aren't you really he just needs to, to, to buckle up on, on, on his, or brush up on his early pace but um, yeah, he's got a huge huge end in Philip Aniato and nice to see him go through with that yeah, uh, let's move on to Heat 10. One of the more impressive performances, I thought, fashion model. She's also oh strong. I absolutely adored this lady in her first two or three starts around Shelburne Park. She looked like a future staying star. Obviously, she has good form over 575 or 600 yards since. But again, some of her best form is 525. She doesn't get that far behind. And she's picking mm. up dogs that, like, she makes fast dogs look slow from the third bend home. Like, she is so immensely strong. She's a, she's obviously bred in the purple cool of any chick. Um, an English Derby finalist herself in the, in her time. Um, here we saw Serene Highway setting a strong gallop. Like, he's a nice dog. He's shown loads of speed in his previous outings, but you know, into the third bend and home fashion model just ragged him. Like she wins five lengths and she only hits the front at the last bend or just because just before the last bend. Massive run from her. Obviously she was aided. Caracino looked right going around in second, and it would have been very hard to contain had he gone around in second. But just looked like he was all at sea around Limerick. Looked like he probably didn't have too much experience of it. Probably a bit too tight to the fence for, for his first run. That's generally where he wants to be. He lost all sorts of ground at the opening corner running off, but stayed on very strongly to be beaten only a short head for second spot. There's lots more to come from him. I, you know, I, I'm on record as saying I, I think he's one of the fastest dogs in the country. But fashion model was brilliant. And it has to be said, Connection certainly deserved this after their bad luck earlier on in the evening. A little bit of compensation for them, all right. Yeah, they did deserve it. But we've seen this bitch in an unraced stake at Shelburne. I think it was an unraced bitch stake. She was coming from miles behind to pick up the unfortunate Lincoln Legacy twice in the semi final and the yeah. final. She was way off the pace. But then she ran in the 600 at Shelburne Park. And 
she more or less kept tabs on Roy Hope Beach. And when Roy Hope Beach is, is on farm and does everything right, he's he probably is one of the fastest dogs in the country. And she's only been a couple Potentially of Potentially the dogs. fastest dog the in the fastest country. Dog, yeah. yeah, exactly. And then she went to Mullingar. She's now looking Mullingar in the, uh, in the Cesarewitch. But um, yeah, she's a real powerhouse. And uh, yeah, to win by five lengths, only picking it up, throwing up her home, she, she really does play strongly. And maybe she's one of those bitches who's better off maybe just missing the kick and tucking in behind and then doing your run up from the second bend because probably doesn't have the early pace to go with the, the real good ones we know she does. Dare, 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 dare I say there's a touch of crafty Kokoro about her. That's a bold shout, all right. But yeah, I can see where you're coming from. She's a real, real powerhouse. And um, yeah, I, I actually stopped crafty Kokoro on this a couple of years ago, I think, didn't I? That's the, yeah, I did. I, did stop her. I think she went out in the second round. Yeah, I did stop her. They were after reminding me of that, but um, don't worry, Pat, if you're listening, I won't stop fashion bottom. Yeah, no, she is immensely fast. I'm a huge, huge fan. Streen Highway, big run in second spot. Carrikino, much better to come from him. Back in third. Glitzy Magic was the other qualifier uh, for Sinead Murphy. Um, good to see Glitzy Magic getting through. It's been around a bit. You know, it has 15 starts. I would have said it probably had 25 starts. I just yeah, seem yeah. to have seen plenty of it. It's been running at Shelburne Park a bit and a few runs in and a score at the um, strong runner as well. Uh, on to Heat 11. And um, this went the way of Fate Point Sean. Uh, obviously, this fellow had shown loads of promise in the juvenile down at at at, at Clomel, should I say, the Munster Juvenile down at Clomel. Um, looks a, a really sort of solid greyhound. His record now reads 10 wins, eight eight or 10 starts, eight wins, two seconds. Nothing wrong with that, Barry. And you can see why. He just does everything right. He was prominent to the corner. He's strong down the back. And off the last bend, he kicked again. Huge run, I thought, in second spot by the youngster, Hanover Sky, having just his third start. Great to see Declan McDonough and Leanne Fleming with another very fast, uh, very fast young tracker. But Fate Point Sean was just too strong for him. Yeah, as you mentioned, his record are eight wins from 10. Like, and he'd win around Limerick uh, a week prior to the competition. Sectionals now were fairly good, 127, 129. And, and they're not flashing the pans because if you look back at the runs he had around Clamel, uh, a couple of 280s around there. So, um, yeah, he's an experienced sort, as we mentioned there a couple of moments ago, bitch having her 16th run. This fella has his, as you say, his 11th, 10th or 11th, 10th, 10th, night, 10th so yeah, 10th. Bit of experience will stand to him, uh, done nothing wrong, 2847. Yeah, it's nice to see um, uh, Leon Fanning and, and Dick McDonough with another one. You see, he would be a half brother of Hanover Phantom, wouldn't he? Be slow door. Or is that yeah, a, is I think that's full, the full brother. Full brother, full brother yeah, yeah, just another yeah. full brother, yeah. So, um, yeah, a good pal of yours, of course, uh, Hanover Phantom. Hanover Phantom, yeah, he's done me a couple of turns uh, in his day. So, uh, yeah, obviously he's bred to stay. I'm um, sure he'll get better with running and, and Scooby Pacemaker, yeah, dog with big pace as well. So, yeah, Junction 14, unfortunately, went out there. But, um, yeah, took another decent heat. Even money favourite. Wasn't that many favourites won down there on Saturday night? It was a good night for the bookmakers, I'd say. Yeah, it was it was a night you want to be standing on the rails, all right. Um, yeah, fine run there by Fate Point Sean, and of course the runner up Hanover Sky, and then to the final heat of the round, and this went the way of Phoenix Tyson. I know you were you were fancying this dog a bit, and um, he, he did what he had to do, Barry. He, he he flashed out. He just got the corner, but once getting the corner, then. You know, he got his just yeah. rewards. He, he got left in a three or four link lead. This was messy in behind. Bally Mac Dapper missed the kick, walked uh, across the fence, found a bit of traffic, got through to eventually qualify at the expense of Antigua Hawk, who I think we were all waiting to see. We wanted to see Antigua Hawk. And if he goes into Sean O'Connor, I'd love to take a look at him. I think he's immensely fast. He was desperately lucky not to qualify, stumbled off the last bend when he was only going to probably qualify in fourth potentially third but it would have been very interesting to see him with a clear run in the future Barefoot on Fire ran on well in second spot behind Phoenix Tyson but Phoenix Tyson got to the front early that's what you need a dog like this to do because that's his strength it's his trapping ability in early speed yeah I backed him to win at 150 to 1 but I didn't have a red cent on him to win the heat I didn't know he was going to be 10 to 1 now look it was a good heat uh, when you see Antigua Hawk who qualified in 28 20 and, and we all know how quick Barefoot on Fire is but the reason I backed this dog, I was impressed with him at Shelbourne. Uh, I said to you before racing on Saturday, it was only an A2 event that he won. But um, I think Martin Lanning has a good dog that he thinks a lot of back in second place. So I think it was a strong event. The night he won that final, Phoenix Tyson, he clocked 28.60 and Deadly Jet won the same night. I think it was the race after and clocked 28.49. So we all know how quick Deadly Jet is. So I was just I was just taken by the run. He's a dog with big early pace. And i just seen 150 to 1. When I, when I see these anti post markets, I always go down the bottom for it. You'll always find one or two. Well, he's the wrong place. So there's a small bet each lane about 150 to 1. But um, yeah, look, he done it well. I think he's a dog with real, real early pace. Just made a bend, but it was all over from then. Barefoot on fire runs on as well back in second place. Just lacks that little bit of early pace. And it's look, it's unfortunate to see a dog with such a big reputation go out, uh, Antigua Hawk. But look, uh, I'm sure he's a big, big future ahead of him. 
Uh, they'll have big targets. Have no fear. Uh, Phoenix Tyson, as I said earlier on about another dog, um, improve, 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 improve. And that's what he's done in his last four or five starts over the four bends since switched to it. If he keeps improving, who's to say where he'll end up? But um, no, a nice Hopefully dog. Hopefully win the Kirby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well done to Ian and to Billy Riley. 12 heats down. Um, an exciting Kirby to look forward to, Barry. Yes, we lost a few big names, but I'll tell you what, some extremely fast greyhounds left in it. Uh, we won't have time to go through the second round draw, but I do want to mention heat two. Uh, which has the certain Bally McDanica racing in Trap 3, but she's flanked one Tarzan Masai who ran such a big race behind Swords Hero in just a second start, Radical Harry, uh, who was behind Bally McDanick of the evening, but he's he's drawn in two, she's in three on this occasion. Oh, yeah, well, they were in the same traps the other night, actually. So, mm. you know, that shouldn't cause Bally McDanick any real concerns, but Carrikino in four is a slight concern because he is keen to get onto that fence. I know he ran off the bend the other evening, but I think that was lack of um, sort of experience around Limerick, but from four, he's a big player in good time, ran very well in defeat behind Rushy Meadows in five, and Balabo Jim, the big 90 pounder, just to add a bit of weight to the proceedings, is out in trap six. Cracking heat to look forward to, but you'd expect Bally McDanica if she repeats anything like Saturday night's form to be very hard to beat. Yeah, she does a 123. Of course, she's going to be there, thereabouts, and lead, and lead into the corner you'd expect. But like all of these dogs, you have to remember they're having their third, fourth, fifth start. There's a huge improvement to come from, and, and you can see all that form book that we've seen there, the lines of form we've seen at the weekend, it can just totally flip with their heads. Dogs have finished fourth and maybe beaten eight, nine lengths. They'll just do things differently for a bit of an experience. And, and a run around the track. And yeah, if you're to look at times literally and look at Bally McDanica and, and, and Carly Keene, you say, well, one's nearly a second quicker than the other, but it's, it's just not going to pan out that way. And yeah, I, I'm sure Liam Dowling and, and Shane Dowling know that Bally McDanica has to do everything right despite breaking the track record. Um, it's, a, it's a short enough run to the corner there. So you, you do need to do everything right. And um, you wouldn't be backing around at silly odds on price, would you? Two's on or. or no, on in that I, th- I think it's watching him. brief. I think it's yeah, watching it is. Brief. So, look, and I, I, to be honest, I think the whole second round could nearly be watching brief in a sense where I'm going to be selfish now and I say I want the three fastest dogs to qualify from every race. Yeah, and know, all know, of a sudden you're set up then. You know, you have an unbelievable stake to look forward to. Yes, it's great when we, we see some of the, the the different people coming through with, with, with nice dogs, local dogs and whatnot, but... We just want to see the best versus the best, don't we? And I and I think this has the potential to be an absolutely vintage renewal of the Kirby Memorial. Yes, we lost a few big names in the first round, but there are some exceptional, exceptional racing to come in the coming weeks. Uh, two or three bits and pieces to um to talk about now before we, we finish up the Kirby, though. Barry, just give me your, uh, I'll tell you what, your likely winner outside of, uh, let's say, you, I'll even give you a pass outside the top two or three if you want. Is there something there that, that sort of maybe well, look, I'm there a bit? I, I've a bet, I've bet on, 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 on Phoenix Tyson, but I, I did think the dog, uh, he's one of the Romeo dogs, his name escapes me now, that ran against Bally McPatriot, Romeo, um, the dog that there's went the, up to Kingpin, is it? There's quite a few in them. Kingpin is the dog that won the competition down at Curraheen. No, he was behind Quarry Boy the other evening. There's another Romeo dog, sorry, he ran against, um, he ran against Bally McPatriot. I have him here now, one second. He was the dog that just went up the inside of Bally McPatriot in the race won by Norris, Ben. Romeo Falco. 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 Romeo Falco. I just thought. Of course, you would have been old enough to remember Falco, would you? The footballer. <laughs> Take from Man United. <laughs> no, that's Radamal. Falco. Yeah, that, I'm to. Oh, yeah. actually, Falco. Yeah, it's not Falco. Falco yeah, would have played yeah. for Brazil, no? It's a remember him in the hair. 80s? No. Yeah. Oh, no. Jeez, no. I'm sure I was only born in the 80s. Hey, hey. Um, yeah, I thought he showed good early pace up. Um, uh, he's, look, he should be a big price, I'd say, still. Um, but um, yeah, just keep an eye on him going forward. But uh, yeah, I have a small bet on, on Carrickino and, and Phoenix Tyson. So um, yeah, look, hopefully those go well. But he just caught my eye. Now, I know we didn't get to see much of him, but um, he caught my eye in the run to the corner. So he should be a big price this weekend. It could be a bit more to come from. Yeah, Little, little Brothers, uh, Metaphor and Kino. I like I like both of them. Um, but if I was to pick a couple at prices... Um, I think if you're backed uh, fashion model, she's in trap one the next night. I think you'll get a run for your money. I think she'll go another few rounds. And I, I liked Rushy Meadows a lot. I really did. I, I thought yeah. she's. I thought she gave me the impression now there was better to come. You know. Well, here, here we go you're again. Already like, doing twenty eight thirty one. You don't need to find much more. You don't need to find. But here we go again. Like bitches to the four again in this competition. Yeah. Fashion model, Bally McDanica, and you're going to buy a greyhound. The dogs are double the price of bitches. You're starting to worry now. <laughs> The bitches are flying lately. They really are. Speak, speaking of bitches, there were some performances around the country from bitches on um, the weekend. Uh, let's start off on Friday night. The Brownstown Tango and Newbridge Track supporters open on race stake. Barry, we, we've seen this competition over the last few years. There hasn't been a final like this before, has there? It, it seems to be an event that just gets better and better and better every year. It, and it's really only spent the prominence the last few years. I don't know how long the competition is going, but 
Uh, we mentioned Bally Mac Orna there a couple of minutes ago. I think she was in it going back a while ago, faced top class opposition as well. So did Susie Sapphire start off on it? She did. She was knocked out in the first round. Yeah, uh, she's average old bitch, doesn't she? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's 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 um yeah, it's a, it's a really high class competition, and, and the event there on Saturday night was, was no exception. Friday night, sorry, Friday, no exception. Yeah. Some big runs in the semi final, um, probably a little bit messy. I thought Fairly Footsteps when she broke like she did was going to go around in front. But in fairness to Drippy's Wiggle and, and Crafty Bondi, like three bitches with huge futures as well, you know that way. Oh, so, and, and, and I'll include Rossella in fourth, I think she's unbelievably fast as well. Um, let's talk about Drippy's Wiggle. She had no right to make the corner, Barry, from the start. No. Um, Fairy Footsteps took a flyer from trap two. Got loose. She's a length clear passing the line, we'll say. And Drupi's wiggle absolutely charged into the opening corner and completely cut across Ferry Footsteps. So you can understand Ferry Footsteps, you know, not finishing in the two after that. But Drupi's wiggle stretched on down the back straight like a really, really talented bitch. Crafty Bondi came storming through. She is so, so fast. She got a little bit held up in that opening bend traffic. But um, yeah, you'd take any one of the first three, wouldn't you? Like any one of the four six. Absolutely, I would. But um, yeah. Look, the way the race panned out when when the traps opened up and two flashed out as uh, and zero eight eight sectional down there. I know it's it's not really a section that you can rely on because we talked about who can earlier on who can could break one second down there, couldn't he? Because you just yeah. you only need to flash from traps really. But uh, she took a flyer oh eight eight and uh, look for the bitch on the outside. She went up oh nine seven according to the sectionals. She had a big run in the semi final last week twenty eight twenty three. I think the track was going well that week, but um. Yeah, again for Rob Gleason, Drupy's Wiggle, a bitch with a huge future. Um, the Oaks is only just around the corner, so hopefully he stays out of season. Yeah, well, well that's the plan. He said he said Puppy Oaks and Oaks. Um, she hasn't had a season yet, so he said, listen, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah. We, no, we, there's we, no worry with her. I'm sure we'll see all of those. He also suggested that he hadn't an awful lot of what done with her. He said, you know, often I, I'd, I'd have mine a little bit more forward than this lady was. He said, but honestly, Ian, you're looking at her card, you're not. There's not much more on it outside of what's on our card so um, yeah you know she, I thought she'd no right to win her semi-final or final from, from the start she made the 28-23 run in the semi-final was unbelievable yeah it was a huge she, even, huge she lost ground of traps she, she she took a bump on the corner and to do 28-23 was unbelievable you know you, absolutely no surprise if she returned to Newbridge next week with a good start she'd do 28 seconds and, and that's hell of a run and now track was in great nick in the semi-final night um, but at the same time, hell of a run. Um, at Curraheen Park on Saturday night, Barry, we had the two semi-finals of the, bear with me, the Apex Global Resources Limited Cork Oaks. You wouldn't be calling that in the last 50 yards. Um, <laughs> unmatched again, set the standard 28-36. As Tommy's sort of best put it over the last couple of weeks, when she should win a race, she tends to win a race. You know, yeah, if she's in yeah, if yeah. she's in a race where she should win, she tends to win. She's very talented. She let off the second bend, stride on well to to beat the fast, fast finishing Orchid Queen, who could have a big year as you know, over over a bit further. Um Gold Cash Ice was back in third. That was the fastest heat. And the other heat went to Belly Mac Run. Seems like she's around forever. She's not that old, but she just continues to run well. That fella Liam Dowling's not a bad fellow with a dog. Uh say Fate Point Susie's second, and Drupy's one stop again, flashing home in third spot. It's it's, it's a lovely final. There's really, really fast pitches in it, but I'd be amazed if Unmatched didn't lead around the corner. Yeah, and you, you talk about Unmatched and look at what she's run against. Her, her last 20 or 30 races, every one of them is AA Open. There's not even a dip down to Mini Open or anything yeah. like that. And you, and you just have a, have a scout through her her form and the dog she's run against, Rupi, Flight Lion, Deadly Jet, uh, Seven Beach, Bacchus Crystal. It's all top, top, top class form. And to hold her form as well as she has, since well over a year now at this stage, a year and a half, and always been running against the top, top dogs. Yeah, you'd like to see her. It's hard to see her being led around the corner and 28-36, if she were to repeat that, it should be just good enough on last week's running. But um, yeah, as you say, Bally Mac run, she seems to be around forever. She always seems to give her running. But um, yeah, it'll be a good final, um, as you'd expect. But um, it'd be nice to see Unmatched win a big one like this. She deserves a sort of a, a biggish one. She hasn't won. She, she's, she's in trap three in the final. Now, if you, yeah, were still, two, uh, if you were to pick two in the middle or to be on her inside, Orchid Queen and Drupy's one stop. Like, yeah, they're not unmatched, less than unmatched is odds on to go around in front. And if she does, yeah, I think she goes do on 28 around 10, front. forget about it. Yeah, she goes around in front and does 28 20, 28 30. You're not going to come from behind doing that sort of a run. So, um, yeah, as I say, it'd be nice to see her win a, a big one. And uh, yeah, she's got an ideal opportunity this Saturday night, is it? Yeah, we'll be Saturday night. Yeah. There was a big prize up for. Um, up for um, decision on Friday night at Galway 
Uh, 5,000 euros is the winner at the time. A3, A4, no back graders, 525. When you see that, no back graders, it often, uh, often it ends up being a better competition than it would be <laughs> if there was back graders. And uh, hot wood, hot wood for Pat Carey and uh, Jerry Holian. Uh, 2863 off the front. Um, last time it'll see A3 company for a while, Barry. Yeah, and look, she'd only won 300 and odd quid up until this stage, and then yeah. bang, she oh, 20 times her prize money. Yeah, yeah, nice to see time sponsor another big one, a nice pot there by uh, time Willie Rigney and, and the gang down there. But, um, yeah, it was our best run by some while. If you look at our sectionals the last couple of weeks, 340, 344, and then when, the, when it matters, 319. So she got her right on final line, 2863, and she will not see A3. For a long, long time. But look, you don't mind going up. Yeah. Uh, you don't mind going up three or four grades when you're after a bag of five grand. So that'll be the kennel bill to pay for the year. Yeah, she's she's out of Burgess Millie, who's Klein and Rosie, Klein and Baby. It's a it's a great damn line. Um yeah, a lot of lot of lot of pace in there. And uh, this is one to look forward to. I would say we won't have to wait too long, Barry, to, to get a glimpse of her. Um we might see her in Shelburne Park sooner rather than later. Yeah, she's only a February 22, so would she be eligible for the Puppy Oaks? I don't, don't think so. No, I don't oh, think so. Not if they're calling her the Puppy Oaks anyway. Oh, We're in March now. So. Unless it started last one, she might get into it. But, um, but no, you'd, look, imagine, sure. you'd imagine they'll give her a spin or two before um, before a crack of the Oaks later in the year. Or the Oaks itself, yeah, it will. So, yeah. Um, yeah, she's a nice bitch. But A3 competitions, again, those sprinters coming into them, they're tough to win those A3. I'll tell you what, it's easier to win an A2 than it is an A3, an A4, A4, A5. So and I even yeah. go down as far as say A6. Um, yeah. Barry, anything else you want to touch upon? Um, no, just a TV trophy in England um, was on Saturday night. Uh, yeah. Good win. Um, a couple of ex-Irish dogs, second and third, Garfini Blaze and Bally Mac Taylor. So, um, yeah, that's always a big one. And, uh, yeah, good to see a good crowd at Shelburne Park on Saturday night. It was, uh, it was I thought, with the match being on across the road, it might detract a little bit. But from, from half six, quarter to seven, it was a nice crowd building up there. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the the TV trophy there. Obviously, Liam Dowling had a big part to play in it with Bally Mac Taylor second and Garfinney Blaze running well for a long way. But um, it went to to Bubbly Inferno. Inferno who, uh, yeah. I assume is British bred, but the, the just want to mention the dam bitch called Bubbly Firebird. She was one that caught my eye in her early days. Um, um, round. It was actually in her early races in the UK. She caught my eye. She came over from Ireland, having run Longford and, and Lifford and places like that. She looks an absolute, you know me, I love stairs. And you want to see this bitch. I think she got hurt earlier in her career in the UK. She looked like she was going to be a real star over eight bends. So it's great to see the bubbly pub who put a lot of money into the game. Mm-hmm. You know, Steve Fluin is a great man to organise a syndicate and, and get it going. But yeah, she was a hell of a good winner the other night. Um, good mention that. Um, Bally Mac Taylor in second. Who's to say she won't be back to win the TV trophy next year? Um, she looked a nice pitch, but just didn't happen for her on the night. Barry, um, a pleasure as always. Uh, will you be in Shelburne Park the weekend? Um, Probably. <laughs> probably, probably, probably. Uh, I think past, I will, yeah. past dependent, is it? No, you can always do but uh, I'm, I'm off Saturday and Sunday, so uh, yeah, I might venture in. I might venture in. Good man, Barry. Well, we look forward to seeing you then. That's it, though, from us on Talking Dogs on a Monday. We have a wonderful Bresbet Easter Cup to look forward to on Saturday night and Saturday week, of course, the final. Two semifinals coming up this weekend. And, of course, the Con and Annie Kirby Memorial is now in full stride. We look forward to seeing some superstars emerging in the coming weeks. It won't be just Bally, Bally, it won't be just Bally McDanick who we'll be talking about in the coming weeks. Have no fear of that. Two great competitions to look forward to as well as the many competitions around the country but that's it from us on this Monday evening we'll see you next time good luck good evening God bless